Hi friends, my name is Baji. Welcome back to our channel. In our previous video, we learned how to set up Dynatrace for application monitoring. If you haven't watched that video yet, I highly recommend watching it first before continuing with this video. In this video, we will quickly navigate all the different features available in the Dynatrace user interface. As an application user, we may not have access to all the features in real time. However, we will quickly understand the purpose of those features. So, without any further delay, let's get started. Knowing the version of any software, including Dynatrace, is very important. It helps you understand what features and functions are available in the current version compared to previous ones. Additionally, it shows if the version includes important bug fixes, security patches or performance improvements. Even sometimes in interviews, you might be asked about the software versions you have worked with. Dynatrace uses an agile development process and releases new versions every two weeks. As you know, Dynatrace has various components like the cluster, one agent and active gate. So the cluster always has a different version compared to one agent and active gate. The cluster uses even numbered versions while one agent and active gate use odd numbered versions. As of this video recording, the latest version for the Dynatrace cluster is 1.296 and for one agent and active gate is 1.295. Okay, you can find more information about these versions in the Dynatrace release notes. Next, we will quickly go over the different Dynatrace interfaces. With the latest Dynatrace version, the user interface has been redesigned and also included several new features. For our discussion purposes, we will refer to this as the latest interface. Okay, and we will refer to the previous interface as the classic interface. Regardless of the interface, most of the concepts and features of Dynatrace function similarly. So, it is very important you to understand the functionalities of Dynatrace. Okay. In this video, we will start with classic interface navigation first and then move on to the latest interface. This is because most organizations are still using the classic interface and switching to a new look may take some time. By covering both interfaces, you can gain knowledge of both and understand the transition from classic to the latest Dynatrace interface. Okay. In Dynatrace, all of its functionalities are grouped into different categories or sections based on the usage of the respective functionality. They are grouped in the same way in both interface. So let's quickly explore those groups. As you know, one agent monitors server and application data and send it to the Dynatrace cluster, right? With the options available in this group, we can explore the data by creating dashboards and charts and also investigate different monitored entity issues. With the options available in the infrastructure observability group, we can monitor various different cloud platforms like AWS, Azure, and GCP. We can also track the health of different servers and understand various aspects of their performance. Next, we have automations. With automation capabilities, we can create service level objectives for SRE teams and automate releases. This allows us to easily understand the performance differences between different releases. Next, we have application observability. With application observability, we can assess the performance of various monitored services and pinpoint how each one affects the overall application performance. Additionally, we can evaluate the performance of database queries, queues and more. Next, we have application security. Due to the widespread increase in the usage of open source libraries, modern applications usually contain a large number of vulnerabilities. Using the features available in this group, we can investigate different security vulnerabilities and understand their root cause. Next, we have digital experience. With digital experience group, we can evaluate real user actions and their sessions. We can also assess the performance of mobile applications, whether they are native or hybrid. Next, we have business analytics. Business analytics is the process of applying statistical analysis to historical data to gain new insight and improve strategic decision making. By using business analytics, we can track the business KPIs or goals that are needed for specific use cases. Finally, we have manage section. So with the manage section, we can perform administrative tasks in the monitored environment. We can customize the monitoring settings as needed. In real-time scenarios, only users with Dynatrace administrator privileges will have full control over the manage section. Next, we will open the Dynatrace SaaS environment and quickly go through these different groups. Okay. So first thing, we need to open the Dynatrace SaaS environment. So to open the SaaS environment, we need to know the URL, right? So when we registered the Dynatrace free trial account, it sent us an email with the environment information, right? So we can use that information to open the Dynatrace SaaS environment. So go to your registered email and then look for welcome to Dynatrace subject email. And then here you can find the link to access your SaaS environment. Okay, so click the access your environment link that will open a new tab and will ask you to provide the registered email and password. So type the registered email. So you have to use the same email address that you have used to register the Dynatrace account. 
and then click next and then type the password and click sign in so that will take you to the dynatory SaaS environment so the view that you are seeing right now is the classic interface if you want to switch it to the latest interface then you can toggle this button so that will take you to the Dynatrix latest interface since i have switched the mode from latest to classic that is why when i logged in it directly take me to the classic interface in your case it might show you the the latest interface like this okay so from here if you want to switch it to the classic interface you can click your name on the leftmost corner and then toggle the latest Dynatrix button so that will take you to the classic interface so in this video what we will do is we will try to navigate all the different options that are available in classic interface first and then we will move on to the latest interface so on the rightmost corner we have a profile icon here it will tell us the user that logs in with the email address and then we can also find some latest news from Dynatrace product since we logged into SaaS environment it is also providing us the account setting information where you can see how many accounts you have access with this registered email so in my case i only have access to one account and we have a language option here by default it will use the language that we are using in browser if you want to switch it to other language you can select the appropriate language in my case i can only see english and japanese english is the default browser language that is why everything is showing in english and since it is a trial version so it is also giving us the information like how many days left so i still have 12 more days to make use of this trial version and after that it will force us to buy the licenses and we have a section called support resources here you can basically find more information about the Dynatrace. so you can go to the support center to see all the different resources that are available for the Dynatrace product okay and then you can also see the release notes here they will categorize all the information based on the release so the current release that we are working is 1.296 and they are also planning a new release on july 29th which is 1.297 so these are all the different releases and when you click any specific release it will give you more details about that particular release so what are all the things that are part of this particular 1.296 so this information will really help us to understand what changes are being introduced for every release so if you are expecting any specific bug fix so you can also go through the release notes and make sure that fix is available okay and we have a link to documentation so it will take you to their product documentation from here you can go through different use cases and understand how you can manage it using Dynatrace I personally always prefer to go to Dynatrace documentation if I have any questions on any specific feature so try to have that habit so if you have any questions or if you want to learn something a new feature then first thing you can go to their documentation understand the steps okay and we have a link to Dynatrace University basically here we can also find some videos about Dynatrace they have given some training like if you go to the live training so here you can find some videos based on the category whether we are in the beginner level or advanced level okay so you can make use of these videos even if you go to on demand so there they have some introductory videos which can help us to understand how Dynatrace works and what are all the different features this is also a good place to learn more about Dynatrace and then if you are really interested to do some certification they are offering three different levels of certifications Dynatrace associate certification this is the first one and then they have Dynatrace professional certification and then Dynatrace master certification I also completed the Dynatrace associate certification so if you want to know more details you can click that link and then see what are all the prerequisites and then the fee so it costs 200 USD and the format will be multiple choice and multiple responses okay they also given a link to see how we can prepare for this so they have also a link for preparation who wants to prepare for this certification so if you scroll a little bit down here they will be testing on this area so capabilities and monitoring 24 percent of questions will come from this topic and then they have components and architecture digital experience management install and configure problem and resolution and reporting and analysis so this is also another good source to learn Dynatrace or if you want to master Dynatrace or if you want to certify Dynatrace so you can go to their university and from here also you can access different documentation links as well okay and if you have any questions or if you want to check anything you can also join their community many people will respond to the question that the Dynatrace users are asking so you can also go through the questions or before you raise any question look for that question in the search to see if anyone else is already asked that question so that you can go through that scenario and the solution that the community members are providing okay and if you are thinking to give some ideas to Dynatrace product for improvements you can also 
do that by going to product ideas so you can first we need to fill our profile before we suggest any idea so complete the profile creation and then if you think that some feature is not helping or if you think that feature can be implemented in a better way so then you can also suggest that idea to dynatrace what they will do is they will go through all the suggested ideas and see which one is mostly rated or which one they think that really will help them to improve their product so they will try to implement that feature okay so basically the support resource section is helping us to go through their documentations to understand more about their product and then we have a dynatrace api section they also have different apis so we can use those apis to extract data from dynatrace and integrate with any other tools that we are using it in our organizations okay so they have classified their apis into three groups environment api v2 this is latest apis and then they do have a older version of environment api which is v1 and then configuration api so in the configuration api basically we can configure different things in the environment so if you want to create a dashboard you can also do that using api so this is a swagger here they have given different endpoints and also different methods for that setting so for example in the dashboard we have get dashboards which will list all the dashboards that are available in the environment so if you want to use this api you need to make sure that you are using the right api token so if somebody is trying to use this api they need to make sure that they have a token with read config scope so they can add the token by clicking this link and then paste the token here and authorize themselves after that they can try out this api so there are many other apis not just dashboard so you can see and similarly we can also access the other apis from here so if i want to go to api v2 so i can also select it from here which will give me the different apis from the environment perspective okay so the metrics api is the one that we can use to pull all the required data from dynatrace so you can go through these different apis based on your requirement you can make use of them okay you just need to make sure that you have right token with the right scope and then we have personal access tokens here it will list all the tokens that we have created in this environment okay by default the personal token access are disabled so you can work with your dynatrace administrators to enable this feature so that you can create your own tokens in the environment otherwise somebody from the administration team has to create some tokens for you and finally we have mobile apps so if you are using a dynatrace mobile app then you can also receive alerts in that mobile app and then we have sign out option so this will sign out from the dynatrace user interface and on the bottom we can also see dynatrace version 1.296 so this is the dynatrace cluster version if somebody is asking you what is your cluster version then you can verify the version that is available here and then you can mention to them okay by the time we are recording this video the latest cluster version that we have is 1.296 so that is why it is showing that here okay and next we have chat option so this is also another important feature especially when we are learning the dynatrace so when you are using dynatrace and you have some questions so you can very well directly ask that question here somebody from dynatrace productive will respond to you so if the answer is there in any documentation they will also share you the link to the documentation so that you can go through it and learn more about that okay so any type of questions related to dynatrace you can ask here but if you want to ask any process related questions so you may need to check with your dynatrace administration within the organization so here they will only answer the question related to the product not related to the process and then we also have time stamp so this is the most commonly used one so whenever you are reviewing the metrics sometimes you want to see the metrics for the last 30 minutes or sometimes you want to see the metrics for the last two hours six hours so you can select the time frame based on your requirement you can also select any other time frames which are not listing here for example you want to see the data for the last five hours so in that case last five hours option is not available here so what you can do is you can come to this area and then you can change it to five so that will show you the data for the last five hours so this is so this is another way to see the data for your expected time frame and we have custom you can also customize if you are more specific from the time so you can select the start date and time and as well as the end date and time so the dynatrace will show the metrics within the time frame and in the recent tab you can see the most recently accessed time frame so instead of you to go to presets or you can directly go recent and then select so this will be more handy when you are using custom time frames and selecting different windows to see the metrics so instead of going back to custom and then selecting the same time frame you can go to recent and then select the appropriate time frame okay and then we have a filter icon here 
so in every organization they will organize the monitored data into different management zones based on their different applications okay so if if company is having 10 application teams managing their application then they may create 10 different management zones so that application one will have access to their applications and similarly application two has their own access this is just to segregate the access or segregate the view of different monitored entities so in your organizations you need to check what is the management zone for the servers are the application that you are going to do the performance testing so that you can select that management zone that will list all the servers, services, processes belongs to that particular management zone. Okay. So in the SaaS environment, I just created two management zone just to show the difference. So easy travel NFT will show the server that are the laptop that we have configured with the easy travel application. And then if I select sample app, then it will not show anything because in the sample app, I am not expecting easy travel to be shown. Okay. So this is the way the management zones work. So it will only show the entities that are belongs to that particular application based on the condition that we are specifying in the management zone. And then we have a search here. We can search for any monitored entity. For example, I want to see things that are there with easy. Then Dynatrace will show all the items that has the easy keyword. So we can see different process group and services. Even the best thing is it will also point you to the documentation link with the keyword easy. For example, I want to learn more about workflows which is a Dynatrace new feature so if I type workflows then it will take me directly to the documentation links okay so from here also you can go to the documentation page and then learn more about that particular concept okay you can search for the existing entities or you can search for the documentation from here and then we have a dashboards link so this will take you to the the last access dashboard since I did not open any dashboards it is taking me to the dashboards view okay so for example if I open this dashboard and then go back to other screen and if i click this button it will take me to that the last open dashboard okay so this is also a handy button which will take you directly to your dashboard on the left hand side we have different options so the first one is you can minimize these items by clicking here so that will expand the view of your dashboard or whatever the screen that you are seeing and if you want to see that menu you can click the three lines that will expand the different options okay and if you want to switch to latest Dynatrace interface, you can toggle this button that will take you back to the latest interface. Okay. So if you go back to classic, then click the name and then switch the latest Dynatrace toggle button. So that will take you back to the classic interface. And then we have a filter menu here. So instead of expanding and then selecting particular option, you can also type that option here. So Dynatrace will filter that from the list for example i am interested to see the services page so i can type services here then it will show me all the different options that are available with the name service so i have service level objectives and then also services and database services so i can click any one of them and then do the analysis okay and then we have favorite section so here you can favorite some of the option that you are frequently accessing here for example i always wanted to see the list of host belongs to my application or healthy or not so i always go to this page so instead of expanding infrastructure observability and selecting host i can add this to favorites by clicking the star button so that will add that item here so next time i don't need to go to infrastructure observability and then select the host instead i can directly click from here okay so what are all the items that you added to your favorites will be shown here next we have observe and explore with the different options available under this group we can explore the data the dynatrace is monitoring the first item is dashboard so here by clicking this link will show you all the different dashboard that you have accessed okay so from here you can create your own dashboards or you can import the dashboard or you can open any of the existing dashboards and you do have some filters on the left based on that it will show the dashboards okay and you can also do the filtering from here as well you can type the name of the dashboard here for example i want to see only the kubernetes dashboard so if i type kubernetes in the filter then dynatrace will only show me the dashboards with the name kubernetes and you can also select one of the option here let's say i want to see only the dashboard that i have created instead of selecting ownership any you can select ownership as mine then it will show the dashboard that i have created since this is a new environment and i haven't created anything it is showing no dashboards okay so you can make use of all these options to visualize your dashboard screen 
we'll understand the process of creating a new dashboard and more in the upcoming sessions okay for now you just understand that dashboards option is available for us to view all our dashboards or create a new dashboard or import dashboards okay and then we have data explorer option so using this we can create our own charts to visualize the data for example i want to see the cpu usage of the laptop where we have installed the one agent so i can use the cpu use metric and then select run query so that will show the line graph because by default it is selected the graph view and if you want to see as a single value then you can select that option so it will show you the cpu usage so right now it is 3.79 percent okay and there are other options also available you can use the top list since i only have one server it is showing one line but let's say your application is having 10 servers then you can use this top list to see which is the most cpu usage server and then there are other options also available here we will go through in detail when we are doing the dashboard session okay so using the data explorer you can create different charts and everything and you can also add them to the dashboard and then they also given some sample templates we can make use of them to create the chart as well for example let's select the server side response so here it will show me all the different services and also their response time with this graph we can see there is one problematic service which is the credit card validation which took 1.23 seconds compared to others rest of the services are in milliseconds so that is why everything is showing yellow and green only the one with highest response time is showing red so you can also define the coloring in the threshold section okay so this is the easiest way to create charts without you to select the metric and then selecting other options from here so that's all about data explorer so you can explore the data so using this data explorer you can explore the monitored data in different ways and then we have metrics so here it will show all the different metrics that are available to us in dynatrace some of them are built in some of them are you know available based on the extension that we are going to integrate in dynatrace so let's say if i want to see what are all the different metrics that are available to measure the cpu so i can type cpu here so that will show me all the different metrics with the name cpu so the general metric that we will always use to measure the cpu is cpu usage percentage so if you want to know more about this you can click this button that will show the details of that metric and then the metric key entity type and also the description of that metric and default aggregation dimension transformation so you can you can go through this information to understand more about this particular metric from here also you can create a chart so if you click the create chart it will take you back to the data explorer so instead of you go to data explorer and then create the chart you can also go to metrics and select the metric and create the chart from here and then after that you can make all the necessary changes as well and if you are monitoring logs in dynatrace and that information is available in log section so in dynatrace logs are being managed using grail since we are not doing any log monitoring with this setup nothing is showing up here but in your organization if application logs are also monitoring using dynatrace then those information will be shown here so we can write some queries to extract the required logs so dynatrace is using dql dynatrace query language to write queries here if you want to learn more about this you can go to the documentation link from here so that will help you to understand more about the dynatrace query language so how to use it and you, you can go through some hands-on experience to learn dql okay and then we have problems so in the problems page dynatrace will show all the different problems belongs to the servers that we are monitoring okay so for example i can see one problem hosts are monitoring unavailable this has happened because i have switched off my laptop then the dynatrace cluster did not get any information from the one agent on this laptop then that is where it reported this problem and again the problems shown here based on the management zone so you need to make sure that you have selected the right management zone when you are viewing the problems you can also pin these problems into your dashboard by clicking pin to dashboard and then you have some filtering options available here so let's say you are only interested on the open problem so instead of selecting status any you can select open so that will show the current problems in the environment for the last two hours with this management zone okay 
and similarly you are interested in closed problems then you can also click close so that will show all the problems that are closed and you can also select the problems based on the CVRT, impact level and also the maintenance. So you can also apply filters from this filter by text box as well. Okay. So if you want to clear all the filters, so you can click clear all. So that will remove all the filters that you have used and take you back to the default view. Okay. So if you click that problem, it will give you more details about the issue. For example, if I click the problem, so it is telling me the, the system name or the server name that Dynatrace notice the problem and it will also create a unique problem ID. We can use this problem ID when we integrate this with other systems. Okay. And also the details about the problem and the impacted infrastructure component. In, in case if this problem is impacted the application services, it will also show the details here. Since this impacts only the infrastructure, it is showing the impacted entity. Okay. And if you want to go back to problems, either you can click here or you can click the problems here. So this is a breadcrumb when you are opening multiple pages so dynatrace will add the tabbing view this is all about problems next we have smart script topology so in smart script topology we can visualize dynamic relationship among all the application components across every tier. so here they have divided the components into different groups like the data center host processes services and applications so Right now we are only monitoring one host, which is this particular laptop. So if you click that, it will show you that host information. Again, if you click the processes, it will show all the processes that are running on this host. Similarly, the services as well. If you select any one particular, so that will show the relationship also. So that particular process is running on this host and that host is running on this data center. Okay. So you can also click on the host that will show you what are all the different processes running on this host and what are all the services that are running on those processes. For example, this database service is talking to this particular .NET. Similarly, this is the credit card validation process and this is the easy travel process that is running on it. And all these processes are running on this Windows laptop and this Windows laptop is running on this from this data center. Okay. So you can quickly see how these different components are connected together. Okay. Again, when you are selecting this, you need to make sure that if you have any management zone filters applied. So if so, then it will only show the entities that belongs to this particular management zone. So this is all about the observe and explore group. Next, we have infrastructure observability. So if your organization is having Kubernetes cluster, so we can also monitor them using Dynatrace. So if those Kubernetes clusters are being monitored, with Dynatrace, then that information will show on this page. Since we don't have any clusters that we are monitoring currently, it is showing as an empty. But if in your organization, Kubernetes clusters are monitored using Dynatrace, then you can come to this Kubernetes page and then view their cluster information, their workloads, pods, namespaces, and everything. Okay. So Dynatrace has an operator which will be monitor these clusters. So that's completely an administrative topic if you want to go more detail but you can also learn by going to the documentation for example search for dynatrace kubernetes monitoring that will explain you the details how you have to set up dynatrace on kubernetes so you need to deploy an operator to monitor the dynatrace cluster okay so all that information is available in the documentation and similarly in your organization if the applications are running in cloud foundry environment you can also monitor that in dynatrace and that if you are monitoring that cloud foundry, then that information can be seen here. Similarly, we have cloud environments like AWS, Azure, GCP can also be monitored using Dynatrace. So in your organization, if your services are deployed in Azure, then you can go to Azure and then you know get some in insights about those cloud services. Similarly, we can also monitor VMware infrastructure using some ActiveGate extensions in your organization. If those extensions are set it up, then you can also see the data here. And then you can also monitor the containers and that containers information can be seen here. Okay. Basically in Kubernetes, all the parts will be deployed as a container. So in your organization, if Kubernetes clusters are being monitored using Dynatrace, then you can see containers inside that Kubernetes cluster here. And the next one is the host. This is the common page that we always go to. So here it will show all the different servers information. Right now we only have one machine where we install the Dynatrace one agent. That is why it is only showing one host. But in your organization, if your application is having 10 servers, an agent might be installed on those 10 servers. So that 10 server information can be seen here. Here also you can apply some filters to visualize the data and also use some quick filters to select 
the required data okay so on this host it will show you the name of the host and then operating system that it is running and whether it is physical host or virtual host and the quick overview of the os usage like how much cpu it is being currently used memory disk and network okay you can also pin this to a dashboard from here we will do deep dive onto this host screens in the upcoming sessions okay for now if you want to see all your servers then you can go to host screen and then check all the servers are listed here in case if anything is missing then you may need to talk to your dynatrace administration team to see whether agent has been installed on that server or not okay so before you do any performance testing make sure that all the servers are being monitored otherwise once the test is done then if you have come back and then checking the servers for some reason if the server is not there then you may need to repeat the test or you may need to get some exceptional approval from your project team by skipping that particular host so to avoid that it is always recommended before you do any performance test first go to host section and then verify all your servers are being monitored okay and then we have technologies and processes where we can see all the different technologies running on our environment okay so here you can see dot net apache tomcat asp net IIS pool java so this is a quick way to see what are the technologies that your applications are being used okay from here also you can select for example if i click apache tomcat it will show me all the different processes using this technology so i can select from here and i can also see some metrics like cpu usage connectivity risk network like rate transmissions gc suspensions number of requests and if you expand this it will show you the process group details from here also you can change some by default it will show you the cpu graph if you want to change other metrics you can also do that by selecting the appropriate option from this drop down okay so this is a group and if you want to see the details of this group then you can click the process group details so that will show you some more information about this process group so how many groups are calling this process and how many groups this process is called so this is the incoming and this is the outgoing and then you can see the number of requests suspension and the cpu information and you can also see how many hosts this particular process group is running here so right now it is only running on one host and on the below you can see the actual process instance information you can also see what are all the different services running on this process group so you can see configuration service journey service booking service are all running on this process group next we have host networking here we can get more insights about the host networks like how much traffic what is the connectivity how many retransmissions are happening and also some environment details so if you are looking for some network information so about your host then you can go to host networking and get the details okay here also we have some filtering options based on your need you can select the appropriate filter and next we have extensions so if you want to extend the dynatrace capabilities so you can make use of the available extension and then add those actions to your environment to get more insights about that particular feature okay so they have 532 extensions are available here okay so for example if you want to add an aws monitoring then you need to add this extension to your environment so that you can get more details about this aws they also given the resources to the documentation to understand the process of you know, adding this extension so you can go through this and then add the extension based on your requirements so next we have automations in automations we have two options one releases so this releases section will help us to understand how many releases are being deployed for this application and we can also track the differences between the releases so that if a particular release introduce any performance issue we can easily isolate that okay so if you click any one particular release that will give you the more information about that release release version and what is the process group it, it had changes and what is the technology and other information as well we can also see if they have any vulnerabilities in this release okay so it will list all the different releases you can also use some quick filters or you can use filters to visualize this view based on your requirement and then service level objectives so this is very important for the sres that reliability engineers they'll create different slos to track their application performance availability etc in your organization if sres created different slos belongs to your application then you can see them here okay and next we have application observability so under this application observability we can visualize our services performance so first one is the front end 
if real user monitoring is enabled for your application then that information can be seen here right now we don't have anything here so that is why it is showing that you don't have any monitored applications okay and then the next one is the services so here it will show all the different services running on this environment for this particular easy travel application because i have filtered right so it will showing that 88 services are there so based on your need you can get more details about any particular service for example i wanted to check the performance of the authentication service then i can select that then it will give me more details about this authentication service so how many services are calling this authentication services and how many services this authentication service itself is calling so it is interacting with one database so that is why that information is here and we can also see more details about the number of requests response time cpu and failure rate so we will definitely go through in detail about the service screen because this is one of the important thing that we always need to check when we are doing the performance testing for now just remember that if you want to check any services so you need to go to this services under application observability okay so next we have kubernetes workloads so if you have kubernetes clusters in your organizations are monitoring using dynatrace then the workload information can be seen here and then we have database service so if our application service is interacting with the database so we can see that queries and other transactions information from here for example our easy travel application is interacting with the easy travel database business database so we can click that and then see more details like the sql queries and procedures so if you click the database statements that will show you all the different queries with respect to metrics okay so this is also a good place to see if we have any problematic queries so that dba can fine tune it and then fix it and next we have messages queues in your organizations if you have mqs we can also monitor mqs using dynatrace so if you are monitoring them then that information can be seen here and the next one is the distributed traces so this is another important place where we can regularly use to understand the performance of our service basically distributing tracing means it is a method of observing requests as they propagate through distributed cloud environments so dynatrace tracks an interaction and assign it a unique identifier so this unique identifier stays with, with the transaction as it interacts with the microservices containers and infrastructure this will provide a real time visibility from top of the stack to the application layer and the underlying infrastructure okay so to see that view then we can select any one of the distributed trace so that will give you the details so here we can only see two level like this particular endpoint is calling this get nodes js url okay again we will deep dive these distributed traces in the upcoming sessions and then you can also do some multi dimensional analysis using this multi dimensional analysis option so you can see all the different top web requests and you can add some filters to get the view that you are looking for and you can also change the chart options by default it is showing as bar you can change it to line or even area okay next we have profiling and optimization so using these options you can do cpu profiling you can generate memory dumps or you can also see the process crash information in some organizations only administrators has the privileges to generate dumps or to view the crashes if you don't have access then you can talk to the administration team to gain this access okay so if you click on the continuous cpu profiling then we can see all the different process groups and the consumed cpu even the cpu time spent in gc so if you think that any particular process is consuming more cpu you can come to this page and then do some profiling next we have synthetic so synthetic monitors are generally will be set up in the environment to make sure that their services are up and running so what it will do is when we have a synthetic monitoring it will send a request to that particular endpoint and wait for the response if it is responding as per the expectation then it will consider that the service is available otherwise it will create a problem saying that the service is down so here there will not be any human interaction like you know, nobody open the application and then check whether the service is up and running instead we can set up some synthetic monitors in dynatrace and dynatrace will send the request to that endpoint or the application service regularly to see if they have any issues or not these are all the different options in this application observability from the performance testing standpoint we mostly go to services or distributed traces or database services to understand the application performance issues okay next we have application security so using this application security we can understand if our application has any third party or code level vulnerabilities are there okay by default it is not enabled so you can also enable by clicking the configure and then select enable third party vulnerability analytics 
similarly go to code level also enable it so we can see the overview so if i click the security overview now it is telling me that there are no vulnerabilities related to third party as well as the code level if so then it will show the details like what is the risk and which host was impacted and everything you don't have rights to enable this in your environment so you may need to work with your dynatrace administrative team to enable this feature for you okay so again they have separate views to view particular vulnerabilities like third party or code level since we don't have anything it is showing no data you can also get it from here as well and then you can also see if your application being attacked by hackers right you can also see the details from here right now this is not configured so you can also configure it here so if we go back to attacks now we can see if any attacks are exploited or our dynatus is blocking any attack so we can see that information as well here okay so this is very good especially for the people who are more working on the security perspective so they can see whether their application is secure enough or not and next we have digital experience so first we have mobile here it will show any mobile applications that are being monitored using Dynatrace here since we don't have anything we are getting the you don't have any monitor application message but in your organizations any mobile applications are monitored using Dynatrace then you can get that list here so next we have web so here we can see all the web applications that are being monitored in Dynatrace they are calling this as a real user monitoring also called as RAM so when we enable real user monitoring so what Dynatrace will do is it will inject a JavaScript onto the browser so that the JavaScript will track all the browser performance and report it in Dynatrace. So if you have RAM enabled in your environment for your application, then you can see that application information here. So from here, you can track the real user performance, like how application is working from the real user's perspective. And we can also see what are all the top three user actions that users are performing in the application and also see if you have any client side errors like if you have any javascript errors that are happening on the browser we can get that information from here as well if full stack monitoring is enabled for your application even you can connect this browser request to the services okay so if you scroll a little bit down it will show you all the different actions that users are performing for example you know somebody is using validate credit card feature so when we click that it will show us more details about that and also it will show the the service information so th that validate credit card request is accessing this easy travel web server so you can do end-to-end -end trace for that particular service and understand where exactly the problem is it on the browser side or is it on the server side okay so this will be really helpful if you want to track the client side performance as well and then we have session segmentation so here it will show all the different individual user sessions so these are all the different users that are accessing this application at this point in time so you can open any one particular session and understand what are all the different actions that user is performing and how the performance okay so you can see here there is one session so if you click that user session it will show you more details like what is the browser or what is the operating system that they are using and from where this user is logged and what are all the different steps that user is doing it okay from here also you can understand if any user is complaining about slowness then you can track that particular user session and then understand what is the problematic scenario you can also use Dynatrace query language to query some of the user sessions and then create some visualizations by using this query user sessions okay and then next we have session replay so Dynatrace has a feature to record the user sessions as well so that at later point of time somebody is complaining then the developers can review the session to understand what exactly the steps that user perform and then try to reproduce that in their environments to see what exactly the issue is okay and then synthetic monitoring again it is a duplicate that we have seen under application observability as well as here it is basically the same thing and then if you want to monitor some custom applications you can also do this and then you can access those custom applications from here and next we have business analytics so here we have an option to explore different business events and then take decisions according to the monitored data okay so those events can be seen here and then again we also have a query user sessions here so which is same as the query user session under digital experience so i'm not sure if dynatus will keep both options or it will remove any one of them but just remember that it is the same thing that whatever we see query user sessions in digital experience is the same as query user sessions in business analytics and finally we have manage which is mostly being managed by the dynatrace administrators okay so you can access dynatrace hub from here you can see all the different extensions that are available and then you can also 
download the Dynatrace here by going to deploy Dynatrace and click the start installation. So it will show you the agent available for different operating systems. For example, if I want to install agent on Linux, so I can select Linux and it will give you the details. Okay. And you can check the deployment status by going to deployment status. So right now I have only one machine with one agent running. So it is showing one host, but in your organization, if there are 10 servers, then you can also see the servers information here with the version that it is running. Currently, the agent that is running on this server or the mission is 1.295.55. Okay. So this is the one agent version. Okay. You can also see the details of this host from here, like what are the different process running. And if you have any active gates running on your environment, you can see that those information by going to active gates. Network zones is segregating the active gates into different groups so that it will manage the requests belongs to that group easily. So in your organizations, if network zones are created, then you can see those information here. Right now, we only have one default network zone with one agent being connected to. So that is what it is showing here. You can also track the one agent health by going to one agent health overview page. So here you can see whether the agent state is healthy or unhealthy. So it will show the metrics here and it will also show what are all the one agent modules that are running on this host. And then if there are any issues in the environment, Dynatrace also will send the notification so we can we can go over those notifications in the system notifications page. And next we have access tokens. So here it will show all the different access tokens that are created in the environment. So we created this token when we are downloading the agent and installing it in our previous session. So that information is showing up here. Okay. So you can also generate a new token from here. And then if you want to store your credentials in, in a secure place, then you can store them in credential vault. So you can see those details here. And then the consumption, this is the licensing thing. So using this agent, how we are consuming the Dynatrace resources and based on this they will send the bills since we are in 15 days trial period we will not get any bills but if you procure license from dynatrace so the billing will be happen based on the consumption okay so the team can come here and then review their consumption to see if somebody is consuming more than expected so they can take necessary actions okay and finally we have settings so in settings these are all the different configuration settings that administrator can configure to manage this Dynatrace environment. Mostly as a performance sister, you will not have access to the settings unless you are part of the administrative group. Okay. So here they can configure the environment based on the requirements. For example, they want to tag the resources. They can also create some rules to tag it. Or if you want to update the one agent, you can also do the update from here. For example, right now, Right now it is 1.295 version is running on this host, right? So let's say in the future 1.297 rolled out from Dynatrace. If you want to push the latest version, then you can also do that from here. And there are other options available, which are mostly managed by Dynatrace administrator. So from the performance testing point of view, we will not be doing all this activity. That's why I'm not going in detail here. But since we have trial version, you can also go through the different settings that are available and then see what exactly they are used for okay so this is all about the classic interface now switch it to the latest interface and here also we have search option similar to what we have seen here you can type anything here for example i want to see host then it will show me all the different options settings dynatrace hub and other documentation links as well and when you click the apps it will show you all those categories like observe and explore infrastructure observability automations application observability application security digital experience business analytics and manage so again all the options that we talked we have discussed in the classic interface are available here along with that they have some new features for example notebooks workflows so these are also some new capabilities that dynatrace is providing okay and here we can see a recently opened section. So what are all the pages that we have recently opened that will be listed here. So we have gone to the host classic settings and deploy one agent. So that is why it is showing here. And then here, if you want to collapse this menu, you can click this so, so that you can get more space. And similarly, if you click support, it will show you all the documentations, release notes, university, live chart and other resources. And when you click the profile link, so it will show you the user that logged in the environment that the user has access and you can also change the appearance let's say you are interested in dark theme so you can select dark so that will show you everything in the dark view okay
and finally if you want to sign out from Dynatrace you can click the sign out so the main difference between the latest interface versus the classic interface is the way they have organized this right so on the classic side all these things are shown on the left hand side but here they have grouped them under apps when we click that apps it is showing all the different options so that's it for this video. Thank you so much for staying till then and supporting me. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions or want to share your feedback, please feel free to leave a comment below. All the video notes have been uploaded in GitHub and you can find the link in the description. If you are new to our channel, please consider subscribing and also like and share this video so that others will also get benefited. I'll see you in the next video in this module. Until then, take care, stay safe and keep learning.